Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Cindy Jordan. I am an academic professor, but I'm also a pastor with our beautiful church, Going Places with Jesus Ministries. And today I want to chat with you on the topic of humility. Wow. Why does God value humility and why is humility important to us as human beings and uh, especially for those of us that are following Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? So I heard um, a particular individual by the name of Pastor Rick Warren that said true humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking about yourself less. And I said, wow, that has that is speaking truth, right? Um, it's not about being docile and weak and, and, and having this false appearance to others about um, being meek and mild. It's really about seeing ourselves as not as in a less prideful way. I think that's what humility really boils down to is seeing ourselves in a less prideful way. In some spaces in our friend groups, culture, uh, in our society, and even in our church groups, we have the idea that humility is weak, lacking confidence, someone who's downplaying their abilities. But have you ever considered that humility is actually the opposite to all of those things that I just said? After taking some time to understand humility from a scriptural point of view and just through observation of folks that I admire, that I, I would say that they are quite humble individuals in different areas of their lives. Um, I found that they all had a common attribute that speaks to their humility, and that was self-control. And so I wondered, can there be a correlation or some sort of connection between humility and self-control? So I wanted to just look at humility from that spin. Humility and self-control. And is it possible? Um, I do think so. Apostle Paul wrote for, in 1 Corinthians 9.27, and it says, But I discipline my body and keep it under control, least after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Wow. Apostle Paul clearly is stating here that while I might be great, in one area of my life, preaching to others and, you know, evangelizing and building churches all over the world. He then beckons himself to a humble place and said, I need to have self-control. I need to discipline myself and control certain areas of my life. Least pride step in, least I might be disqualified. And it takes a lot for someone to get to that place of self-awareness, like Apostle Paul did, where he recognized and he was very transparent that, yes, I am good in certain abilities, but I am weak in others. And that I need to be humble enough to admit that so that I can draw strength from self-control and discipline. So realizing that being transparent and being humble in our areas of need for improvement is not casting a dark shadow on yourself. It's actually, if we look at it more closely, it can be an opportunity for growth and for allowing God to come in and continue to help us to mature and to grow and to develop in our gifts and our abilities in the way he wants to use us. So rather than seeing humility as weak, I then tend to look at it as humility as rightly appropriated strength. Mm. Humility, rightly appropriated strength. Because humility is really allowing us to know how to demonstrate those strengths in the appropriate time in the way that is accepting and pleasing to God and those to whom we are called to.